morning, everyone. My name is Nicole Oldhoffer. I'm excited to be here today. I'm going to present on Google Hangouts. I'm a member of Do It Academic Technology, a part of the online course production team. So I work as an e-learning designer with a variety of different tools. And currently, I'm actually on special assignment for the credit uh, or the Canvas Credit Transition Project. I'm practicing some project management skills there. So. Um, E-learning designers, I always kind of joke about, are a bit of a jack-of-all-trades type of person. Um, we know a little bit about a lot of things, and enough to make us dangerous, and so I'm excited to share what I learned on Google Hangouts with you. So um, this actually came from the massive open online course, Forest and Humans, that I had the pleasure of working with uh, Catherine Woodward on. This was fall of 2015 that uh, this MOOC was offered through Coursera. And the um, particular uh, event that we used Google Hangouts for was week three, there was a lesson on the human's impact on forests. And Alex Wiedenheft, he works here at UW-Madison, um, he was like the guest uh, speaker for that week, and he was sharing a little bit about illegal logging and how um, he had developed a tool that helped uh, police enforcement, law enforcement, identify if somebody was trafficking uh, wood illegally. I had no idea this existed, so I thought that was pretty fascinating. Um, I'm going to just share this video here with you briefly. And I apologize, I'm gonna to have to kind of bounce back and forth between PowerPoint and some video. So this week he shared a little bit. Center for Wood and <laughs> Research at the Forest Products Laboratory. We have the world's largest research wood collection, which is essentially the world's largest library of scientifically collected wood specimens. And we use this on a day-to-day -day basis as reference material for identifications of wood, whether that be for illegal logging or other purposes. This is a specimen of... So he shared a bit about, you know, what he did, and then... I want to share uh, another section of this video. So this was part of the week's material. And then later in this video, he demonstrates this xylotron that he um, helped to identification develop. system. It's called the xylotron. Xylo means wood. Uh, to identify specimens of, unknown specimens of wood in the field. This is not meant to be a laboratory-based forensic level identification, not an expert level, but a field tool for law enforcement to get an initial idea of whether a wood is or is not what it's claimed to be. So that video was presented to students that week and they watched it. And later, uh, we scheduled a Google Hangouts with uh, Alex. And it was a real-time session where he presented with uh, Catherine about the Xylotron, and the students from around the world had the ability to chat in questions with him. And this is just kind of what we were trying to achieve with our Google Hangout. And he also was able to demonstrate the Xylotron tool in action during that um, broadcast. We scheduled two different sessions because since uh, the participants were uh, geographically dispersed. We had one early in the morning and then one late in the afternoon to make sure we could accommodate people from different um, time zones. So we were interested in Google Hangouts because uh, Google is something that is widely used you know, across the world. There's just a large amount of people who have uh, Google um, Plus accounts. <laughs> We were interested initially in having the students log on and potentially video chat with the instructor. But the issue with Google Hangouts is that you can only have 10 participants online together at a time. And they actually upped that recently to 15. That's still just not enough, especially for a massive open online course. And I'm sure for many of the courses that you're teaching, you have more than 15 students. So what we uh, looked at then was this Hangout on Air. 
Now, Hangout On Air has recently, as of like probably two months ago, been converted to YouTube um, On Air. So you are using the Hangout tool, but the students watch the broadcast via YouTube. And that is fine for us because YouTube is also something that a majority of students use or just people use around the world. There's, I don't know the percentage, I should have looked that up before presenting. Um, but I mean, essentially for participants to uh, watch this broadcast, they just had to simply have the YouTube URL. And if they wanted to participate in chat, they just had to have the YouTube account. So very easy, very simple for the student to be able to participate. Um, and uh, there is no special like software or downloads or plugins that are needed for YouTube. So that's something else that we thought was a real benefit in using this model. Um, a lot of webinar tools, and really this is just a glorified webinar that we were doing. A lot of webinars require um, downloads and plugins and people just get lost. Like, through like doing that. There's a lot of technical issues um, that happen when uh, you have these uh, webinar tools used. So we really like the simplicity of this. The other um, nice thing about using this was that the URL for the participants to watch the broadcast while it was happening live, and then to watch the archive of that broadcast after it had completed, that URL was the same. So that was great because we didn't have to then send out a second URL to say, if you missed the broadcast, here's the URL to watch the archive. It was the same URL, so that was really, really nice. So I'm just going to share a little bit from that broadcast here briefly. And I'm going to transition over to YouTube. So you can see here it says Hangout on Air. And Good morning, everyone. I'm here with Dr. Alex Wiedenhat from the Center for Wood Anatomy at the U.S. Forest Service Forest Products Laboratory here in Madison, Wisconsin. Alex is going to take your questions today about wood identification, its importance and uses, in particular in the context of illegal logging. Hopefully you've already seen Alex's video on the problem of illegal logging and have some questions ready for him. So Alex, without further ado, we will turn it over to you. All right, and I'm just going to skip ahead. These are this is out on YouTube, so if you'd like to take a look at that, you can later. I'm going to jump to the section where he actually demonstrated the xylotron. We have that same wood specimen that I cut a few moments ago. So you'll see no fancy camera work was happening here, but it worked. From our wood collection, and an area over here where it's been cut, and then right here, that I just cut a moment ago, and if you would point that at the screen, this, this little window here is the output of our device. So if I put the imaging device, these are my blue jeans. So he's demonstrating that, and then a little bit later, uh, just to give you a sense of how this worked, well, at least, especially with the hamlets, um, there's not as much to see with the conifer. Um, so he is taking questions at this time. Line, so Catherine's two, kind two, of two off the screen, line, and just she's watching the, the chat paper. window, and she's uh, relaying um, the, the first, questions to Alex, so he can address them to the students, the students who are watching real time. That we use for macroscopic so hamlets. So a little bit more into how we um, set this up. So, um, we decided to put everyone in one room. It was a way for us to reduce some of the uh, technical risks that could occur by having one person at a computer in their home and one person at a computer somewhere else. And that's actually what we originally wanted to do, but we just decided let's make it easier and put everyone in the same room. Because then we didn't have to like switch back and forth between webcams, maybe if Catherine was at home and then Alex was here. We didn't have to have like somebody do that. It's something that you can totally do. It's just we decided it was easier for us to um, eliminate that. So we had, this would be Alex, and we had Catherine. They were here together in front of a computer. 
we had a webcam that was attached. It was an external webcam, and as you saw, Catherine kind of would take that webcam and point it to wherever it needed to be to demonstrate that Xylotron tool. We had a separate mic that we had set up, and this was to ensure that we had good quality audio. And I really do firmly believe that people are more lenient on poor quality video, but they really cannot tolerate poor quality <laughs> audio. So, and I think it's just kind of like, uh, I mean, with the video, they appreciate the fact that it's realistic, right? I mean, it's kind of like reality TV. Well, I don't really love reality TV. A lot of people are used to it. So the fact that, you know, the camera, she was moving that around, and it was a little bit shaky, like, people really didn't seem to have much issue with that. And the um, microphone ensured that the audio was uh, good. And then over here, this would be me. And I was in the same room, and I was basically watching the student view and just making sure that there weren't any latency issues, uh, watching to see if anyone said they were having issues watching the broadcast, um, just checking to make sure that the chat was rolling in. Catherine was watching the chat um, over here as well, and she was, you know, relaying those questions to Alex. I was off screen completely. I was trying to have no part in this other than just to make sure that it went well. Um, I do like this model for doing these types of events. It does ensure that things go well. If you don't have this many bodies, you could simply remove this person over here and just have two people. It's nice to have a presenter and a moderator. Um, if you are not able to do that, you can just have a presenter but you kind of have to divide your concentration in that you are presenting and thinking about what you're presenting, but you're also watching the chat log and having to uh, look through the questions, think about those questions, and ask yourself those questions. Well, that's a little awkward, but you can get around that. So um, that's essentially what the setup looked like. As far as what went well, or I'll start actually with what didn't go well. <laughs> Uh, linking uh, the Google account and the YouTube account was a bit of an issue. So if you are the presenter, you need to have both a Google and a YouTube account. They have improved this since we did it last year. Um, these accounts kind of seamlessly integrate now, but we had issues in getting those to link. There was some help documentation online which, you know, we were able to uh, follow and get that accomplished, but hopefully that won't be an issue for you if you choose to use this um, now. The other thing that didn't go super well, and I don't know if you noticed that, um, was the autofocus of the webcam. So in the YouTube broadcast where um, Catherine was moving around the webcam, and even at the very beginning, because there were two presenters on camera, that webcam didn't know where to focus, and so it would like go out of focus and go back into focus. And so I had wished that we had gotten a better um, camera to use where we could have controlled the autofocus and turned it off. So those are the things that didn't go well. What went well was that we did get ourselves into a quiet room so that the audio uh, quality was uh, decent. The microphone that we used was just a standard Snowball mic. I think they have really great um, audio capabilities. You could also just simply use a headset. I would not use the mic built into your laptop. The other thing that went well was that we did a practice session. So we essentially did this before we did the two uh, broadcast sessions um, for the different time zones just to make sure that there were no glitches when we actually went live. It also just makes sure everyone's minds are at peace and can focus on actually presenting. The chat session worked well. Um, I find that having people participate real time with audio sometimes causes more issues than is worth it because they might be in a loud environment. You might, they might be, I actually remember a teleconference I was on where the person was driving and it was just like this terrible racket, like they had their window open and like no one could, you know, concentrate or pay attention on this like teleconference. 
So, you know, just by using chat, you remove those potential uh, distractions. And, I mean, personally, when I participate in these types of events, I don't always want to, like, speak, you know? I'm actually also worried that I might, like, hit my mute button or not, you know, uh, have it uh, functioning correctly. So just chatting in is sufficient for asking those questions and interacting with the other people that are on the call. I had mentioned the two sessions that was good for catching the different people in the time zones. And then we did send out, prior to the event happening, this YouTube minimum requirements link. So while YouTube does work fairly well across um, different bandwidth connections, you know, software downloads, it's still a good idea to have your uh, students check to make sure that YouTube will work for them um, where they're at. And that's just something, a URL that's on uh, their website, and I think it's also on the handout that you have today.